Hi everyone, my name is Stan. I'm a long time Apache Ignite enthusiast and contributor. And uh, I'm pretty excited about Apache Ignite 3.0. And today I want to talk about it with you. First, I want to start with why Apache Ignite 3 exists. What is the motivation behind it? Then uh, we will look at the key changes that are coming in Apache Ignite 3. And then uh, we will talk a bit about Apache Ignite 3 Beta 1, a release that is coming out these days and the latest release uh, in preparation for uh, Apache Ignite 3. So Apache Ignite 2 is already great. It is used all around the world. But there are a few things that the community would like to improve. There are some legacy APIs that could be modernized, removed, or reworked. There are some ap approaches to configuration with the static XML and uh, uh, static configuration in general that uh, are a bit cumbersome and a bit hard to start with. Uh, on the internal side, there are algorithms and protocols that could be replaced with uh, some industry standard libraries that uh, pro provide uh, better features and which are also tried and proven in many projects out there. And the existing protocols actually don't provide uh, a few important features such as uh, we cannot have SQL transactions today in Ignite 2, or we do not have split brain protection out of the box. So all of the solutions to all of the, these problems, they basically require breaking compatibility uh, with previous versions. It means introducing a major release. And if we want to break compatibility, then why don't we fix as many things that we can uh, in one release so that we don't need to break compatibility multiple times? And hence Ignite 3, uh, uh, the ambitious project of solving uh, many Apache Ignite 2 uh, existing problems. So what are the key changes coming to Apache Ignite 3? Let's review them in three sets. First, we will look at the changes to the core architecture, then changes to the APIs and how we interact with Ignite as developers. And then uh, we will look at the uh, changes to installation and management experience. The first thing you do with a cluster is getting the nodes together to form a cluster. And in Ignite 2, this is done with a discovery protocol. In Ignite 3, this protocol is replaced with a protocol called Swim. Uh, it is implemented with a library called ScaleQ, and it is a cluster membership protocol that allows to combine uh, no, uh, nodes into large topologies uh, in Ignite 2, we had to use Zookeeper uh, as a helper to build large clusters with hundreds of nodes. And in Ignite 3, uh, this will be possible just with Ignite out of the box. The next big change is to the replication. In Ignite 2, replication is done with a custom protocol that's unique to Ignite. And there are other protocols out there, such as Raft, uh, that can uh, replace it and provide better features. For example, Raft is basically industry standard for replication in distributed systems. It uh, has split brain protection out of the box, and it is also available as a, a implementation in Java uh, called JRaft, which Apache Ignite 3 uses. On the SQL side, uh, Ignite 3 makes CalSite the default and only SQL engine. CalSite 
is more performant uh, engine that can allow uh, better optimizations for SQL compared to H2, which is the default in Ignite 2. Ignite 2 already added Calcite as uh, alternative experimental engine. And in Ignite 3, this will be the default choice. Binary tuple replaces binary objects in Ignite 3 for serialization. Binary objects have a few flaws, but most uh, commonly seen is that uh, binary objects don't allow to change column types and uh, to change column types you type in uh, ignite today you need to come up with various workarounds and in ignite 3 this will be made possible because of the new serialization format on the storage side Ignite 2 already has a pretty good storage called page memory. It works for in-memory, it works for persistence, but some use cases require other data structures that work better. For example, write-intensive applications work well on LSM trees. Ignite 3 adds an ability to change a storage engine for a table, uh, choose a storage engine for a table, and Ignite 3 will have two uh, engines, uh, one that's page memory, which is the same as Ignite 2, and the other is RocksDB, which is an implementation for LSM. Future Ignite versions will add more uh, uh, storage engines to use. For transactions, there is a completely new protocol in Ignite 3 that replaces the old two-phase commit. It is a state-of-the-art protocol that's based on the multi-version concurrency control uh, and a few other concepts and mechanics. And uh, the main thing it provides is uh, the SQL transactions, the long-awaited ability to use transactions with the SQL queries. On the API side, first big change is that uh, there are no longer different types of clients. There are no longer thick and thin clients. Thick clients are pretty heavy and cumbersome and uh, it's uh, harder to use them, but they are more feature rich in Ignite 2. Ignite 3 starts with thin clients and uh, there is no concept of thick clients in Ignite 3 and thin clients are feature rich and you can use them for everything. Ignite 3 will use a different term for cache. Uh, uh, caches become tables. This is because cache is a bit of a misleading term. Cache is something that you can lose, something that's not persistent. And in Ignite, it's just not true. So the word cache has been misleading users, misleading newcomers for years. So Ignite 3 fixes that. One of the big goals is to remove the discrepancies between key value and SQL uh, in Ignite 3. One of these things is introducing SQL transactions. Uh, Ignite 3 also uh, changes the schema management approach so that uh, SQL and key value will, will work with the same schema. And it will make it uh, generally easier to uh, interoperate between key value and SQL. In general, Ignite 3 reworks uh, various Ignite APIs in a way uh, that helps to remove legacy stuff, uh, redesign the APIs to support modern approaches such as asynchronous and reactive programming, and just generally make APIs easier to use and more friendly to new users. For configuration, Ignite 2 uses uh, static XML files uh, and Ignite 3 will use dynamic configuration. Dynamic configuration is stored in the cluster itself and can be changed by REST or CLI at any time. And uh, the starting configuration, the bootstrap configuration is provided to the cluster via this Hocon format which is another language, another markup language to, that is good 
exactly to specify thing, uh, things like configurations. On the installation and management side, Ignite 3 will come with uh, platform specific packages and user experience for different types of installations. Bare metal or uh, application Ignite embedded into applications or Kubernetes, Docker, Cloud. All these environments require different ways to install Ignite into the system and expect different ways to uh, run it. For example, where on Linux you probably need a system level service that uh, needs to be installed together with the package. On Kubernetes, you don't need uh, such a thing because Kubernetes manages starting the, uh, the nodes for you by itself. So uh, all these things will be taken care of in different uh, packaging and different wrappers around the core product. Ignite 3 changes and updates the REST interface. REST will become the main entry point for all things management in Ignite 3. Uh, in Ignite 3, REST is truly RESTful, uh, covered by an open API specification, meaning that it is easy to generate a client which would work with uh, the uh, Ignite 3 REST and use that client in your automations written in uh, any language. And then there is a command line tool. A unified command line tool uh, in Ignite 3 is based on a Picocli library that allows to build rich and powerful command line interfaces. Uh, it has classic uh, batch mode uh, to run to just run commands and also an interactive readable print loop which allows to start uh, the CLI interactively and inside of it use uh, auto completion syntax highlighting and uh, uh, work with the cluster more easily uh, the CLI tool no longer uses any custom protocols for, uh, to connect to the cluster and will just work on top of REST. So whatever REST can do, CLI can do and vice versa. So these are the key changes and you're probably excited to try them out. I know I am. So uh, Ignite 3 Beta 1 is coming out these days and this is the best time to start looking at Apache Ignite 3 and start uh, playing with its new features and new APIs. Uh, with Ignite 3 Beta 1, all of these key changes that I talked about are already there, implemented in Ignite 3 and in previous alpha versions. So you can already install Ignite with, with uh, platform uh, specific packages. You can use the new CLI, you can use key value, SQL, compute to build uh, your Apache Ignite applications for the version three. Uh, beta one is not a production ready release of course, uh, for example, it doesn't have scaling up and down capabilities or transactional recovery, and it generally works best on a stable topology. So you can do all, all the experimentation that you need, but of course not take it to production yet. So you can join the discussion of Apache Ignite 3 Beta 1 right now on the community developer list. Uh, check out uh, Ignite 3 Beta 1, uh, discuss it with the rest of the community once it is out, download and try it out and uh, provide feedback on the new APIs, installation, uh, CLI and uh, developers in the community will be able to use this valuable feedback 
in the further uh, iterations of Apache Ignite 3 development. Thank you so much.